it's good to be back. Uh, we're doing a movie night tonight, so we're going to be doing entertainment-related questions only. And since we're going to be doing entertainment-related questions, I've got a small little uh, preview of my own here I'm going to show. So just a quick word um, on uh, on the update on the Star Citizen stuff. Uh, it's uh, I saw a uh, cinematic. Uh, trying to get, I've been trying this whole time, really for almost a year and a half now, to get to do it in Unreal Engine and and um, and facial motion capture, body motion capture. Just getting the characters into Unreal is a horrific. Um, uh, adventure, and um, and it's just taken forever. Uh, and then I saw uh, uh, Machinima, which is uh, actually just game capture footage that really blew me away in terms of its uh, camera work. Uh, the guy, whoever whoever did that, was a real real professional, had a good eye. Um, and some of those shots were so amazing to me, I decided, uh, well, you know what, let's see what we can do right now uh, using just what's in the game. Uh, the in-game motion capture, there is none for the body, and there's not nearly enough movements. You, you've got a, you know, you've got like 10 second movement. Even the idling is just 10 seconds of idling, and then they go back to standing still. So it's a very, very, very limited toolbox, very limited. Um, and I have tried uh, to um, get this uh, facial motion capture done in the game. And they have teeth, the teeth of the character, the models of the teeth in the game are just horrible. They just look like a mouthful of chicklets. It's just terrible. Um, but uh, the biggest problem I've been having with the, um, with the facial motion capture, the eyes are great, I have to say. The eyes are, are really, really, really good. Um, the, um, it's the mouth. The mouth is very, very, very shaky. Even if you're holding completely still, it's kind of doing a, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of noise there. I just keep cranking up the light. The more light I put in it, the, the better. Uh, as I add light to it, the, the camera doesn't have to work quite so hard. And um, and it's able to put, it, put out a, a, a better signal. I'm still going to, I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. Um, so I, here's what I did. I shot a bunch of, of test footage. Uh, I just went to an interesting location, and I just tried to see what I could do with camera angles, just camera angles, that's all. I was interested in, in how, I could, how realistic I could get these things to look just on ship exteriors, just with camera angles. And I went down and shot about, I don't know, 30 minutes of it. I just kind of set a course over this planet and flew around the ship and you know moved around and changed focal length and changed depth of field and everything to get it more or less the way I wanted it. Now when I got a chance to finally look at all that footage I realized I had enough footage to actually um, hammer together a narrative. So I just want to be clear on this. I didn't go out, I didn't go to in order to make what I'm going to show you. I made what I'm going to show you out of uh, scraps that I found lying on the floor after a camera test. That said, I'm very happy with it, and um, and I was able to uh, find some camera angles that are not often used when people are taking uh, game footage, and I was also able to put uh, a, a really good shader on there, post-production shader. I looked at, it's called a lot, it's like a, it's a lighting preset, and I, uh, I looked at a hundred of them. And finally, I put this one on there, and I thought, that looks absolutely fantastic. So what you're going to see is just a string together of some uh, test footage. Um, and uh, it's got a little music, so you might want to brace yourselves. I don't know if it's going to come in too loud. That's entirely possible. I also did some sound design on it. I, I went out and stripped the sound effects right out of it and built, a, built the few sound effects that are in it up myself. Um, but that said, like I say, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, so I, I'm going to show it to you now, and I'm curious to know what people think. You'd love to see your comments in real time. We'll chat about it a little bit afterwards, and then uh, we will get on with our questions. So um, give me a second to make the switch, and uh, we will uh, get this thing rolling here. It's called um, Another Day at the Office.
And that, as they say, is that. Um, I was very, very pleased with that. Um, there are moments in there uh, where it's just a, a combination of the lighting, uh, everything, the texturing, all of that stuff. There were moments in there with the addition of that shader, it didn't look anything like that nice coming out of the actual game. Coming out of the game, it looked like computer graphics, and the problem with computer graphics is that they look like computer graphics. Everything is, is too perfect. Everything's completely uniform, and everything is smooth, and, and all of that stuff. And the, the one thing I've learned about uh, this, having been in the computer graphics business for quite a while now, since 92, I guess, um, is that in order to make this stuff believable, you have to, you have to dirty it up. Um, you have to make it look like a human's involved somewhere, which means camera work's got to be a little bit erratic. If it's not, then it's going to look too perfect. Uh, and one thing that is very, very effective is um, the uh, the grain. L laying, laying a little grain over that. I may maybe put a little bit too much on there, but still. Uh, the grain takes away that, that computery look, and, and the particular uh, LUT I put on there was... Um, very high contrast and kind of desaturated colors, and and that was great. Uh, I haven't seen anybody comment in the live section yet about um, a sound effect that I added there. I thought people would be jumping all over it, uh, but uh, if you already guessed and hadn't answered, I'll just give it to you right now. And that's the um, the radar, uh, the, the the sonar pulse that he's following, trying to find this uh, mineable asteroid, uh, is very unusual. Tree pong, tree pong. Yes. You did hear the sound, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it was um, it was from 2001: A Space Odyssey. I just lifted it from there. All of the inside of the pod noise. It's when it's when um, uh, Dave Bowman is going to get um, Frank Poole's body. Trick pong, trick pong. It's a very unusual sound, and I kind of liked it. Uh, so anyway, uh, that was um, very encouraging for me because. Uh, 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 let me just say this: I can live with that. I mean that 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 quality of lighting and rendering and on the exterior. If you if you get, if you're able to go into post and put enough of a buff on it, um, I think you could actually live with that. There are there, one or two shots in there. I thought that's almost photorealistic. That's really pretty good. Um, so I was happy with that. I was happy with the camera angles. I'm just starting to get the hang of getting the camera to move smoothly. It's very, very, very limited uh, set of tools we have for this. So the next step is to um, is to see if I can get the facial motion capture. If I can't if I can't get the characters to speak believably, then I got nothing. I, I've got machinimas. I, I I've got what you just saw. I've got oh, isn't that cool? Um, it's kind of a picture of a, of a planet, or it's flying around a spaceship. It's going to live and die, uh, whether or not we have to go into Unreal or not, or whether we can do it in game. It's going to live and die based on whether or not we can get subtlety of emotion out of that facial motion capture. And I suspect we probably can, although I think I'm probably going to have to shoot a couple hours for every three or four seconds I'm able to take. As I said, the biggest problem with the facial motion capture software that comes with the game now is that it has a hard time defining the lips. And so it doesn't really, it, 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 it is looking for, I always turn myself blue when I do it, it's looking for this limit here. And sometimes, especially when your mouth is closed, it doesn't know exactly where to put the upper and lower lip. So either later tonight or tomorrow, uh, my beautiful wife Natasha has offered to help me, uh, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put uh, reference dots on my face the way the way that they do for the professional things. And I'm going to see uh, that word you're looking for is an animatic, Martin, I think. Um, previs, yeah. Uh, so um, I'm just going to put some dots there and, and reference dots and see if that helps the software track the lips. If the software can track the lips to the point where I can sync up just a sentence uh, then I think we're in business. Um, one of the things I learned about this, uh, this uh, cinematic that I saw somebody else do, 
he basically did he did uh, like the good, the bad, the ugly in space. It's Clint Eastwood in space. It's actually really good. Um, Aesop, if you could uh, could send me that link, that'd be great. Uh, on maybe on um, uh, on uh, Discord or something, that'd be awesome. Um, the uh, the motion capture on the eyes is is great. It's having a hard time reading the subtleties of the eyebrow. It kind of has to, you know, it, it, it's not doing the, the micro gestures as well as it should. I'm, I've got a lot of hope on those reference dots. And if that doesn't do it, then we have to wait till the software gets better. The problem is that there's no announcement that this stuff is improving. They said we were going to get an upgrade. And what they gave us on the upgrade was a chance to make the same looking characters easier. They, they've given us... Uh, eight different human heads, and we get to morph between them, noses, ears, eyes, and all of it. But um, but they're of the six or seven, three of them are European, and uh, and none of them. There's not like there's like no super thin nose anywhere in that collection. You can't morph it down to get to get the look you want for one character. It's all the, the parameters are way too narrow. So until they start giving us some new target heads to morph with. Um, everybody in this universe looks like everybody else, just slightly different. Uh, it's almost impossible. I, I've never seen character in, in Star Citizen character that was like, oh, that's different. Um, so just to wrap up the whole Star Citizen thing, one thing I'm going to start looking into now is, um, needless to say, rather than uh, the, the whole moving the whole thing to Unreal is an enormous, enormous, enormous undertaking. And resources might be better spent if we were to find a way uh, to um, to get into the game engine and just do little tiny little things. For example, um, when a guy's walking down the street, he's got a spacesuit. That spacesuit is a product of a map, texture map, and, and bump map, and so on. I'm virtually positive that that information is hosted on my machine. In fact, it's got to be. So when I talk about going into the game and cracking things around a little bit, uh, it'd be very nice if I could go into the um, maps where the spacesuits are and then put the Aurora logo right here. That kind of thing. Uh, the ability to go in and, and, um, and, and put the kind of colors and, and livery and stuff on there. This guy who, who really woke me up with this thing, with this uh, kind of Clint Eastwood in space thing, did an amazing job, and, and I know this is not interesting for everybody, but it's movie night, so here we go. Um, the, the, it, his, the series is called Hard Space, and um, it features a, a ship from Star Citizen called the Avenger. And the opening credit on, on Hard Space is a rimlet shot of the Avenger, and it's beautiful. And I remember thinking, where did he shoot that? In other words, where did he put this model in this physical universe so that he could get this camera with this, this camera angle? And then as um, Clint Spacewood, that's funny, Martin. Uh, and then as the pan continues past it, I realized that the texture on there is not the texture from the game. And so what he did was he did the same thing I did with my um, Avenger movie, he came out and uh, and took the model out of the game, textured it, shot it in either Unreal or 3D Studio or something, and then cut that into the Star Citizen footage he was using. So I just, I've just been excited to talk about this. The reason I wasn't going after doing this in-game earlier was, number one, um, I wasn't sure that the, that the rendering was good enough, but certainly they, the camera and exteriors are now. So that's a thing out of the way, but there were blockers, um, and for me to tell the stories that I wanted to tell, there are two major blockers that I that I could not see a way around, just doing these machinimas out of Star Citizen. One of them was the facial motion capture wasn't good enough for a performance, and this has got to be a performance. This has got to be something where you're using subtle shade of emotion. Uh, I've never seen anybody get this right in any. Uh, machinima. They're, in, in the cutscenes that come with professional games, they're, they're perfect. But um, nobody seems to be able to really cut a scene together in terms of uh, 
making the faces believable. Most of the time, the faces just look awful because there's just this low-level ambient light. In order to get a good face out of this, you've got to get into bright sunlight. So the motion capture of the face was, was the main blocker to just going ahead and starting now. The second blocker was that I didn't know what to do about things that I needed that are not in the game. Most notably, this nightclub with these sensi uh, these sexy dancing robots. I just didn't know how to get that scene shot in the game. They have a couple nightclubs in the game, but they're kind of nothing like what I wanted to do. And then I realized, you know, I could actually shoot the characters in the game against a black background like space, let's say. And I could key them into exteriors that I, that I rendered in a different program. Uh, I wouldn't even have to do the motion capture. I could, just, I could just have them walk through in the Star Citizen game, key out the background, key in the, the nightclub, and then I could add the dancing robots and all the rest of it. And that was another blocker that is at, at least a possible workaround. So, um, yeah, the SIDS, I've got to get, SIDS has got to be right. So, so basically, I realized there was no way to create SIDS in Star Citizen. And so I couldn't do this out of Star Citizen. I couldn't do a machine of unused game footage. And then I realized, well, what these other guys did was they added a couple of effects to the game footage. There's, a there's one explosion that is, is a post-production explosion. There's an air leak that's a post-production air leak. And that actually gave me some, some big ideas in terms of, um, of whether or not there's a way to do a, a workaround that would allow us to get started now. Um, so uh, I'm going to send out a word to the rest of the organization. I know Foghorn's working on uh, something really important that we've all been uh, waiting to see. I was supposed to do it, and it's been six months, eight months, something like that, and I just haven't had the time. Um, but uh, what we're going to if, – if it turns out we can do it in-game, uh, it'll be an amazing experience for those players who are interested in helping out because for those of you who've never been on a movie set before – you will not believe, I mean seriously, I'm not joking about this, you will not believe how boring it can be, how, how it's just mind-shatteringly boring it is uh, to, to make a movie um, if, if you're a performer. Uh, most all of the time that you're actually on location, you're not on camera and you're not acting. You're waiting for the lighting guys to, to light the next scene, the sound guys to get in there, you got to get the, the the director has to pick a camera angle. Then the then the director of photography has to get the scene lit. Then the sound guy has to figure out how to get a microphone in there without casting shadows. Is one damn thing after another. And then finally, um, you get to go in and act. And then you get to do the same thing again and again and again. If we were um, if we were going to do this in game, I'd need a reliable group of ten people. Let's say maybe occasionally a few more than that and um and we'd all basically log into the same location in the game and i would i'd have to say i need two people in these orange jump shoots i need one guy wearing this i need a woman wearing that and this would be basically the costuming and casting phase all the characters are the same size and that's a problem too They're, but but i could probably live with that until it gets better and then honestly it becomes what an actual movie is, especially if you're a background actor. You need to sit at the bar and you need to talk to this guy, and that's all you do. Just do this, you know. Um, and and then you two uh, need to start way back there, and I just need you to walk to the to, towards the camera, and occasionally just look over at each other. You're just you're just background. Um, if you're willing to do that, it's actually it's a, it's a fun kind of boring. But it is, okay, back to one. Let's go, back to one. Um, and, and then everybody goes back to where they started from, and then we try it again. Uh, the the, the um, computer camera is much more difficult to control, at least given the level of technology we have here, um, than, a, than a, a real camera is. So it's very, very touchy. And there'd be an awful lot of, um, okay, back to one. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. That said... Uh, I think after having seen this last thing, um, that, uh, that it's certainly worth a try. So, um, rather than jumping into the story I want to tell for the whole 
Aurora thing for all of these um, things that I've been talking about for a year and a half, two years now. I hope between now and, and uh, New Year to do a, a, a test story, maybe a four or five minute story with characters and action, not connected to the main story at all. I just want to see whether or not I can tell a story um, and make it convincing with dialogue and, and all the rest of it. But we, we took a big step um, just last couple days. When I saw that footage come back, I thought those angles looked good. I haven't seen many people covering those angles that way. Most people just make it look like a computer game, look like toys, but that, that looked good. And then doing the, um, the shader was great. And doing the sound design was great. That particular ship, the Prospector, is essentially like a Harrier. And, and whenever you see this thing, it's kind of just kind of floating over the surface. But I realized that if you were actually that close to the thing, it'd be just unbelievably loud. And that's why I was happy. I put in like a background jet wine. And then um, on top of that, I, uh, I put, you know, um, full afterburner sound. <laughs> And it really, 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 really made a difference. So, um, so that was that. But uh, anyway, so that's enough of that story. We're going to get to questions now from Facebook, and um, I'll, ch I'll check the BillWiddle.com page. Uh, and um, we'll see where that goes. So I'm just checking a couple links here. Uh, 